everyone. I've got a new Nautilus, and this one, um, my client Charles has named Rubesco. He's red. Um, he's made out of red Brazilian rosewood. Um, he has these cool red um, acrylic red gugas inlaid, and um, a nice red Calton custom case. So red is the theme. And let me see, I'll play a little bit, hear what red sounds like. Well, another Nautilus is uh, being let loose upon the world. Um, this one, as I said, is Brazilian rosewood, and the top is uh, Adirondack spruce. And um, man, Adirondack, it, it's a great wood, and it has a tendency um, to be, well, in my opinion, one of the least pretty spruces but this particular top is it's just killer this is definitely master grade wood um creamy even no run out um and beautiful silking all the way across so that's cosmetically it's also uh very very stiff wood um so i was able to thin the top quite a bit and when you thin it, it means it weighs less and um, if you can keep the same stiffness with uh, less weight, that's what you're looking for. Um, that means the strings energy, less energy has to be expended on just exciting the top and more energy can be expended on maintaining the tone in terms of uh, a long sustain and giving um, more sophisticated overtones and so forth. So, um, and it makes it much livelier, you know? It's not some big leaden slab that you have to really reef on the guitar to get going. It just jumped, the sound just pushed in immediately, um, immediately emerges when you play. So that responsiveness is, is really gratifying as a player. Um, this guitar is, you know, I'm getting happily, I think I'm reaching, um, high Nautilus um, period in my building. I'm getting really consistent results these days. Um, you know, I, I, make, I make my guitars all very similar. In other words, I, I make it a point to not uh, do, make any radical changes. I make incremental changes and I do them in a very controlled way, really one thing 
per instrument. I'll try a little tweak here and there, just a little bit, you know, to see if I get um, some effect that I'm, I'm working for if I change more than two things. I know I've said this before, but if I change more than two things, I'm not sure which is responsible for which. So at any, way, any rate, I've done enough of these that now my recipe is, is pretty, um, it's pretty reliable. And um, that's a really exciting place for me to be as a builder, um, I, a lot less fearful. So when somebody orders a Nautilus, I know I can deliver one of these babies. This one has a couple of special features. And one is that Charles, who's this guitar is for, loves to amplify. And he's uh, a real audiophile with, the, uh, with pickups. So he switches them out a lot and fools with really, this has a uh, M factory and a uh, Sasney pickup in it, both of which I've never used before until now. And they're both super high-end pickups. And like they had to be, there are two pickups, so they go into this stereo output jack, which I, I put right here, which is an eighth inch rather than a quarter inch, just because cosmetically, it just breaks my heart to put a quarter inch jack on one of these guitars. I've got to be honest about that. Um, and in order, and he wants the option of dealing, of like messing around with it, you know, uh, location, maybe trying some different pickups or whatever. Um, so this is a door. Uh, this strap pin here, you unscrew and there, I won't do it now, but there's a cross piece. It's really easy. You can have this thing off in a couple seconds and then you can reach right in there and do all the messing around you want to do. So, and I think that's, it's fairly unobtrusive um, to the design. So that's, uh, that's really what is the main difference with this particular instrument. I did want to point out that this red um, Brazilian which I've been told comes from the Bahia uh, region of, of uh, Brazil and the mineral content of the soil there is sort of responsible for its red color. But I wanted to point out the cool sapwood on this set. So it has a sapwood stripe down the back, which is, by the way, almost perfectly quarter sawn. It runs out a little bit over here, um, but the center is all, all quarter sawn and the sides are quarter sawn. Um, but the sapwood is the same color as the top. I just think that is the coolest look. I've never made a guitar that looks quite like this before. Um, it's the only one of these. Um, and it's got a cool little ink line separation between the two. Oh, and a quick word. So some people um, have speculated or said various things about sapwood on... Um, on my uh, Facebook feed or whatever you call it. I'm not very technologically hip. So um, the fact is that, that sapwood can be a liability if it's not the right kind of sapwood. But for instance, it, it can be softer. The sapwood is the, is, as the name implies, it's the vascular living part of the tree where um, the fluids and nutrients are mostly uh, transported up from the ground to the limbs and it's lighter and as, as, as it matures it becomes heartwood and gets darker so the outer side of the tree outer part of the tree often has sapwood and even um, trees where it's not visible to the eye this is this is the case um, however this wood can be punky when certain species punky I mean soft like you jam your fingernail into it but this stuff is I mean for all intents and purposes it's just as hard as the heartwood um, it rings fine and it's not at all uh, a compromise structurally. And I think it's, it can be, if the sapwood is nice and clean like this and has a beautiful differentiation from the heartwood, it can be a really striking feature on the instrument. So I love building with sapwood if I have a set that is capable of doing that. Um, sometimes I have no idea how long I've been talking. I might have been talking for a long time at this point. But I'll just uh, keep talking, but briefly. So I've got ebony for my bridge, ebony for the fingerboard, and ebony for the head plate. And I think the, the head plate, you know, the front and back are both ebony. And that you could call that plain or you could just call it elegant. You know, it's so that, that red inlay in the, the black ebony. And th this ebony 
is, you know, it's mostly black, but it has enough uh, grain in it so you can tell it's not black plastic, you know? I, I love that. I want the ebony to have just a little bit of grain. Um, okay, so I'll play one more thing and then get out of here because that seems to be what I do these days. Um, let me finger style something. Um, uh, let's see. a tune I wrote a long time ago. I just pulled that one out of the hat. Cool. Song without a name. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Charles, I hope you enjoy this guitar. It was a pleasure building it. And um, I'll be back next. My next guitar is going to be a an Ibex, my 12-inch parlor guitar, but done in the comma style. So I'll see you soon. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.